we gotta talk to this guy again. Right but. to work! Right to work! Shame on you! What does posture check do? It makes me sit up straight. Actually, need to speak with the union boss. Have fun. Union shits are on full strike. I don't think they're going to let you through the gates. Why you want to meet that fat asshole? I'm interviewing people about a murder that took place here behind the hostile cafeteria there. I know nothing about a murder. Absolutely nothing. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. This really isn't my area of expertise. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! Ooh, real. Oh, you posture check me, what a cocksucker. Play Titanfall 2 already? Ha <laughs> ha! No. I'm just gonna blitz through talking to Minyana again. A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody gotta be bloody stupid, or freaking evil to scare. Or I guess scared maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentlemen shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. We've explained the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. I was just messing with... Imagine, you cops going on a... Psst. Show him your stolen car. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the Wild North? Come to see the strife? <laughs> to get me... What happened? I was... Did you? At first, so I went to this... Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I learned that... What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. I did some research in... How does it? In parts. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where... Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to... A mess is epic, then. All across Martinez. I hope. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. Oh. Good, good. What matters do you want to discuss with Everard? Everard's got a lot of knowledge about a lot of things, eh? Doesn't I don't operate in that capacity. I. Yeah, then press, then go back. And you enter the arbor through the office. Está. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. Or you could convert to a semi supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. If it isn't our favorite mentality disabled cop, that sure is me. The corner smile sure is great. What, this? The expression? Sure. The expression of a madman, more like the expression of a sad man. Right, let's go talk to Measurehead for the lulls, but we're not gonna kill ourselves on him. Yo, oh, but. Yeah, Measurehead. Oh, you it must be fighting into. What is this? Merely standing up. Stop it! <coughs> this is this pl Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. That is precisely the negligence that you reek of it. And you visit It's not it's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk and drowned. 
No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The imp begging. You gave the world eugenics. Electricity. You dominate a lesser. You will be super. It is bad. There is a button right behind him. Just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should bring your troops to the seminary. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul. Your beloved. Subscribe to his advanced Inside, race theory. I'm not doing the that. To homosexuality you call art. And your microcephalic skulls. Don't be such an asshole to your fellow dock workers. The man looks at you, silent and unmoving. His eyes burrow into the remnants of your soul. <laughs> you are not Santiago. Santiago is yeah, I not. Yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Even the frenically impaired can see this. <laughs> Isn't Everard, the union boss, white? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital. Something your race, naivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. In individualism is my jam. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? Gotten it from disco, Offshoots actually. of the Seminis people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Okay, I'll ask, who are the Seminese? The South Island race. Aplo Group R4R. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Rebishol? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the Grey Mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pay. What? So you did not come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. So you're not really Seminese, you're just from Rivashol. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Rivashol. The city is central to the Seminese strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture... It's like arguing with a real racist. World. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. And never getting into the harbor. Kim, what do you think about this? I don't think anything about this. We are wasting our time having this conversation. 
Your pedomorphic friend is right. You should leave here with your tail between your legs. Contemplate in race extinction. I am an immovable obstacle. Yeah, this is arguing with Zero, but like this guy could crush my head with his hands. And Zero can barely crush a Pepsi can. What are those tattoos supposed to mean? <laughs> Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. You gestures towards the lorry man down the street. Welcome to Revershaw. You hear him yell at a redhead woman visiting the fritter nearby. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. You sure I'm not craniometrically superior to you? You exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia <laughs> and sexual inaccountability. He's got the schizophrenia part, right? From a aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not craniometry, just an observation. What else? It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of al -Hul. From what remain of your features, I can see fleshy lips. Baldness of the head and long arms relative to lower limbs. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal, an offspring of murderers and sailors from Sur la Clé and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate sheep herders of Ubi. Interesting. So one of my ancestors was Sir Leclef and the other Vesper? Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all Rivasholians. Your parents and their parents made the decision to reproduce while under the influence of al -Hul. That is the only reason you are here. We still need to get into the harbor. There is an interview to conduct. There must be another way. What do you think of that, Kim? Yes? No, I didn't know anything to say. What do you want to know? Now that, even, now that we've inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing cop that you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine. As if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is a struggle over who runs Martinez. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. What are you drinking there? It looks like tea. It's a V8 fruit fusion. I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest, with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. So he volunteered to spoil it. Yes. I am an unrepentant spoil sport. I wonder what that says about me that I was sent by my station. Hmm. I must be an augury, an apocalyptic omen sent by my people. Can you guess my message? No. There'll be a bloodletting of unimaginable proportions. Unimaginable. Oh no, it's very imaginable. We fail to place responsibility for the hanging. The harbor company see the situation is out of control, so they bring in private military, maybe a gunship. The Union responds in strength. 
automatic fire. Local law enforcement solving one little homicide decides nothing. Not solving it can have real and calculable effects. Things can always get worse. Matter of fact, Oguri, we should move. <laughs> What's special Martin about the Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. Okay, enough of the competition then. Tell me something. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Why did the 41st send me? Because you're what? the best qualified. No, that doesn't seem right. Dumb brain, I'm good for you nothing. Look dumb if you keep the lieutenant waiting for too long. Okay. <sighs> what else are we doing? I think this cop is an inbred. He might just be really hungover. Back to the fucking Kuno. We're running out of time in the day. We got four hours left, I think. No, three. No, four. Right? No, three. I'm dumb. Talk to Minyana about the armor. So? He told me you promised to sick a pig on him. He said you're now the king of J the entire Jamrock. Uh, north Jamrock? Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south, doesn't fuck with the Madre. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. I'll remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Uh, Kuno, I found your yeah. shack. Did you fuck in there? What was with the pig head? Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Cool pig head, I like it. You got one too, this one. It's shit. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird <laughs> level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? <laughs> Went over their heads, I guess. No one saw that. <laughs> I found a plate covered with powder resin. No, I know what that is. What's with the tube of magnosolum, Kuno? It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. Come on, it's just magnesium, don't mystify You're it. Yeah, and this pig, it completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Right, Good enough. call, pigmeister. Kuno does. Alright, let's head up to the roof. See if we can get into the harbor. Are you going to put these VODs on YouTube? Uh, maybe. We'll see if we actually, fin actually finish the game this time. I tried streaming this game uh, on release, and I didn't get very far. But then I went back and played it and realized I loved it. So.
No chats, no YouTube VOD. Oh shit, chat was chat's been off. Mm. Them's the rules. But what if we just now chat's on? What what does that mean? Oh wait, what have we here? Doorway is going to collapse soon. How soon, I wonder? How are we getting over there, man? Chat's been turned off for weeks. Yeah, I know that, because I'm usually not uploading chat. Um, am I dumb? Son of a gun, it's a cop cloak. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. That machine is a Kvalsund 1020 HK. Kvaslan 1020 HK. Is it? Kvalsund makes a lot of heavy equipment, but this is phenomenal, even for them. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. Do you think the cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it... You need to jump, just drop well, down. It doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. God damn it. You're such a pussy. Are you serious? No, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Hey, hey. What happened? I'm alright, Kim. I just I can't do you it right stand. now. We can always come back. God you damn it. Better. Motherfucker. Speaking of Destiny, you guys were up late doing GMs, yeah? Yeah, did they go? Uh, we got one done. But we were, uh, struggling a bit on getting the second one done. doesn't want to do the autopsy yet, right? The rotting man lies on... The 
The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. First, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Actually, it appears I have forgotten what a field autopsy is. Fine. It's a three-part form to be filled out on the scene by the detectives responsible. One takes note, the other dictates. The goal is to establish cause of death. Do we need a scalpel for it? A scalpel is not always required. I hope this is one of those cases. Latex gloves are, however. Clap your gloved hands, let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. All right. I'll ask you when I need you to. For the most part, maybe I should handle the contact and you take notes? Where should I take these notes? My paperwork? Yes, you see, the field autopsy form is the one on red copy of paper. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rooney. Which was it that killed you then? Love or communism? Huh? You said love kill you, but when you fell, you said it was communism. You're misquoting me, Rooney. I said communism killed me. Love did me in. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yep. yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Open your ledger at the field autopsy The form. dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Assistant. That's you. Write the initials HDB. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings, just lies there. The next box says Coroner's case number KK57 0803. Next. Name. NA. Next. Date of birth. Hmm. Age. Roughly 50. Dry 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. I'm going to write around 40. He nods. Mondial. 42. Race Mondial. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other. Sex? <laughs> fucky fucky! Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex! <laughs> right, male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of, date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. 040351. What else? Nine, body identified by is non-applicable. Ten, case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. What exactly is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. I'm not so sure. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside. Grand Coudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today. 
42 stations of breath. Whew. How long is this game? Uh, I want to say my first playthrough was about... We should start the post-mortem. Let's look real fast. Uh... Uh, a little under 30 hours was my first playthrough. No, it's probably like 25, 25 hours was my first playthrough. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. External examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's... Oops, sorry. See, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color, white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. When am I going to get them? Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity. After the lieutenant has gone to sleep, I hope this has helped you, my liege. He's just gonna see me wearing the boots later. Nah, write down the boots. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.100. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha numerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck tied with a hangman's knot. Color yellow. Length three meters. There is a buckle on the other hand. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving. The on. hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch, wet. Red down, short, light brown, male pattern baldness. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest. Consistent with predation. Right down. You get your mark. The, oh, geez, it's just ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife with the other hand pulling on the belt. As he starts cutting into the polyester, the stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. It's still wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now, we need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Look for a good spot to the cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come oh, out. Oh man, please don't fuck this up. Can I turn on chat? Can I turn on chat? Can you guys help me out? I have, to, I have to put in the token again? What is this shit?
I don't want to fuck his head off, dude. Secret code. Okay. Can't quick save, can't save. <sighs> Fuck. Alright, chat, get, chat, chat, give me strength. After some oh, deliberation, God. you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. I really don't want to fuck up the autopsy. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. So, does it wear off? Okay, yeah, then it wears off. It wears the off pretty fast. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, Genitalia. No! <laughs> Let's get out and see! I fucking knew it! Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Mm, back to the dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Not all I expected. Right down the Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, Dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Scarring is extensive, way more than our law officials. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars. Last item, hands. His flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from? And what's your name? My name is... I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Cobo. What can I do for you, Il Cobo di Cappadocia? Nothing. I got nothing. Nothing is as nothing does. This was pleasurable. I sincerely thank you for touching my hand. We should do this more often. Be close like this. I mean... Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. Were you expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal examination summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. If I may add the moral of the what story. Be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. <laughs> the brain is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. All right, not available. Good. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, 
The lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Gently, a rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. <laughs> as a back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the man's jaw. He stops to exert more force, both hands are used. cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there, sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Look deeper inside. Shit. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. What? Hemorrhaging present in mucus. <laughs> Write it down. Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why? Don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. Not available. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening? At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with cocaine. But still, you should add a request. Right, and I add toxicology request. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Omit the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Non-fatal, post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non-fatal post-mortem. Right. Next. The corpse lay slouched to the side. Okay. Oh shit, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Back to the body. The rotten the lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. All right. Be thorough if you want maximum results. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. Ligature marks. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck. There's a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured. The cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. 
don't rush. Non-fatal post-mortem. Hmm. Why do you say that? I'm serious. I don't think this was an injury. I, just, I don't think this was the injury that killed okay. him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? <laughs> Why weren't his hands tied? A big man like this, I would tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. <laughs> But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. God, I feel my, like my fucking skills are all shit. First, how did it go? It was a. Uh... An irregular field autopsy. Gross we muscles? No, we're not doing any that, physique this run. Which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. I can't, I can't uh, fill out that, like... I, do not see I don't get that many skill points. For success. Do I have another? No, I don't. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. Yeah. I would not hold my breath. Yeah. Be right back. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Would I rip out a copy of the autopsy page? processing. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. <sighs> Chat, help me out again. Give me, uh, I think it's Motorix, right? Yeah, Motor. Oh, we can't get my Motorix any higher. Shit. Never mind, don't help me. You rub Fuck! Your hands Damn it! The victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Did you guys, what'd you Maybe do? Should be more. Oh wait, you oh. can't get Motorix to five. <sighs> Look under his fingernails like Kim already His did. fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. That's all. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yes, there's something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Gart at the Whirling in Rags and the Fritz store down at the gates. If they don't know, but only if all else fails. I know where the fridge is because I played this game before. Fuck are you looking at being old man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Wanna get fucked? Only if all else fails. Hurry. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, whatever we are looking for will become harder to find. Okay. Aces high. I forgot we were internalizing this. For the rest of the world, the Aces High is 
just the cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades, and those cargo pants could store tools for hotfixing your aerostatic. Maybe you should ask him about this. Okay. All right, let's get to work. Ace is high like Iron Maiden. I think it's like a high five. Can I help you? I seem to be in need of a fridge. Yes, yes. For the dead body. You want to put a dead corpse into my fridge, right? Correct it. Yeah, that's well, the gist of it. I have a fridge, and you're not putting it here. Why? Because this is a culinary establishment, not a morgue. I can't believe you even asked me. It would only be for a... Lieutenant, you too? You're asking too? No, the answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. <sighs> Let's go talk to the Frit clerk. Okay. We gotta sprint! We need to be fast, we're running out of time! We got, like, a little over an hour left. Though I don't know if I can keep being a cop after, after 2100. I don't know if I, like, need to sleep in this game. I never tried it. Hey, you got a fridge? Um, mm-hmm. Right behind you. I need to store a corpse there. Um, you're joking, right? Never mind, yeah, it would never fit. super funny. Okay. Well, I guess we're not putting the body in a fridge. Oh, well. Damn shit, I am out of luck. Let's just quick run this way super fast for no reason. Cheater, it's not cheating. I played the game before, bro. Hello, small child. Do you know where there's a fridge? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little boy. Really? I failed that? What's the point? God damn it. Don't be ridiculous. I know all these You're things. Nobody. Don't you sass me. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. Oh, you can I actually ask her if there's a fridge. That's actually... F I didn't know that. Say, child, you wouldn't happen to know a good fridge, would you? A fridge? Yes, yeah, like a big, big fridge a cop would put a dead body <laughs> into. You mean like the ice bear fridge? Man, that's scary. Actually, did, I actually fridge. didn't know there was dialogue for this. <laughs> yes, like a bear, but white. There's a fridge below the building in the basement with red glowing eyes. I went back there once, behind the bookstore. Mum doesn't want me to go there anymore. Not that I want to. It was pretty scary. And there's a big fridge there? Yes. Alright, one more thing. How do I get inside the building? Um, that's a problem. The only way in is through the bookstore. But my mum is pretty strict about not letting anyone in. But, I don't know. You're a policeman. Maybe you can convince her somehow. Anyway. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organizing the stock. 
feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. No, should I have a word with the store owner, maybe? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Isn't going to school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. That sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. What do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. Did someone say, sneak around in the cellar? We should do that. How's this curse manifest now? Hmm. Enough about this curse Maybe for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. We're going in. We gotta get to that motherfucking fridge. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring no. into this space. Stop asking for money, dude. <laughs> Are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. I was told there's a huge fridge in the building cellar. Can you lead me there? A fridge? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? For whatever reason. She's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. What if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. What the Don't books you feel do? compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with See a those shelves then... there? Go. Be drawn. What type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? All right, I'll take a she look. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Does that know what real cops do? Maybe, but I'm not a real cop. Your daughter's the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yeah. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? She's certainly polite and helpful. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. I'm here to d dismantle the free market and abolish tribal child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kids? Good, sir. What does a young child <clears throat> do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Oh, guess I was mistaken. Indeed. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. All right, let's right. change the subject. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Hey, Psst. 
Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. I'm sorry? Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? Love has love has worked out really well for me. I'm a love Good. winner. We need tender men like you building gargantuan communism. Word on the street is it's going to be 10,000 times larger than any communism previously attempted by human beings. How come there's is word on right? the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie. Eat the rich. Sodomize the landowners. Impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. I've said some mildly left-wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mass of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? What is, what's this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. Failure? Yes, abject failure. Total irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped and pissed on until you came along you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world you alone against every living thing against every human alive 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well organized ruling class towering city blocks of bank men who have the ears of prime ministers Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm and the spin. Where the whole world failed. Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will failed to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild... I just wanted to make sure Annette was getting paid. Class. Now get to work, comrade. It's too tiring. I don't have... I don't have it in me. I'm beat down and broken. Very well. I guess no one will build communism then. Tell the working man it's over. Unless anyone has object. Let not failure ensnare you any further, beautiful pixie girl. Be an acrobat. A prancing fairy queen. Anyone? There's no one. Okay then. Lie down and let the water carry you downstream. Goodbye, communism. What's behind this mysterious yellow curtain? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside... A disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. Shopkeeper. The curtains remain shut before you. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Why aren't you browsing the books? She fiddles with the Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pen and her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Now, psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? I 
heard there's a fridge there that Everybody I need. Everybody suddenly needs something from there. Leave the curtains be. It's what it wants. But I sense this place calling for me. I investigate. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My God. Even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Can't stop me. I'll open no. them. No. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here. And let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. There is something mysterious about the curtains. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Okay, fine. Back to Placence. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know if what's on the other I side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. If it's just a storage room, then why do you have a strange trinket on the curtains? It's just for decoration. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse the manifest curse itself? It's so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy. What does she mean? And their that? malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists, and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this. No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. Mm. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. This game confuses me. I think that's the goal. Would you like me to take the case? I can investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the Psychic arts? Sounds right down our alley. Gave smart ass parenting advice. Slither up to her, you silver tongued fiend. Show her what world class perfidy looks like. Wait, what if I don't want to lie? You're not lying. You're giving her peace of mind. The means are thus justified. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled I've handled paranatural situations are you sure? before. Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I've returned from the void, a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one, and you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. You see, it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. How do you know all this? Here we go. I am the void revenant. I have the powers to de-bad all the bad energies. I should have realized. A pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. 
You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? Just ask my partner, I Kim. I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. <laughs> He'll vouch for oh, me. Uh... Let's go, let's go. He's not been listening closely enough. Void you put him on the spot. Is so as Void Walker. I can assure you my partner is eminent in this particular field. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just office space and the damn fridge. Don't be scared. Farewell for now, book peddler. Toby, thank you very much for a 33 month reset with Prime. Thank you very much, Toby. You see, a Moonwalker's not useless, just, just middle tray. To another room. A strange cage like trinket dangles from the curtains. Pull the curtains open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! <laughs> Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. A heavy door with a Wait, missing hang on. handle. Looks like a Guillermo de Million, that hair post. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. A hollowed out, dark echo. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, Kim, maybe you should go Detective, first. Detective, you're the one in charge. All right, let's go hunt some ghosts. There's a witch in here, apparently, living in the chimney. What is this place? It's an adventure. Looks like a gym to me. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a ray of streetlight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An airy feeling rises in your chest. Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious Sounds here. Good. Excellent. Hey Kim, is this bright? Sand is dripping from the punch bag. Ooh, big gains. Poster says, Sadus Fortis, the rest is torn off. It smells like leather and sweat. Torn out wall bars, they look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? No. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There's no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. 
Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. So, did I used to it's work just out? A memory. Or is it just like memory from being in training for being a cop? <laughs> Always blocked by old window panes and debris. Large Dimojan full of strange liquid. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Ooh, creepy mannequins. Jesus Christ. Airship rotors cover in spider webs, they remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso, strange yellow color. Nice. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Corruption schedule, filament memory. Skis with slipstream print on a laminated top Looks layer. like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. What a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Reality is ruthless. Hang on, we got thoughts. Ah, uh, where are the clothes that used to display? Shit, I fucking pressed them both. God damn it. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Still nothing. No one's home. I'm gonna hurt myself. I'd, I'd really rather not. The floorboards creak. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. So recent? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. The These drawings. lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even Ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin, this is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> the note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin. 
to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. One of, the, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Oh, this is getting meta. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Just look at those details. So much effort. Inspect the photo photos. collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. What? Holy shit. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Sorry, I had to shut my window. The wind's getting intense. Keep reading what happened. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and Heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, The biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Okay, we'll keep... We gotta find this fucking fridge. We are running out of time. We'll come back for sure. Learn more about the Welkins, don't you worry, chat. Oh, uh what have we here? A refrigerator in the shape of a giant fucking bear? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. It is terrifying. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? This must be the fridge you were told about. Look inside, see if it's big enough for the corpse. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. Oh, it's on? You hear Jesus a low Christ. as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's the fridge, remember? Of course. A giant ice bear shaped fridge. <laughs> Just what we were looking for. Let's see what's inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take note of the door. You pocket the note and take the, the little fridge door. magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. This is clearly the fridge. It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. 
Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head. You take oh, the feet. I can't go back the stairs to the will be easy, but we'll manage. Okay, let's do this. The body is heavier than you expected. And Are we taking this through the bookstore? Half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. Really? You think it's good work? No, not really. <laughs> Look at that. What have we done? We stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This story does not leave this room. <laughs> what the fuck are these dialogue options? There's always one that's just like so bizarre. I think this... Uh, we did our best with the beans at our disposal. Did we though? Okay, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection. Under controlled circumstances. Hey, Vaughn, how's it going, man? What's up, Rox? We just stuffed the dead body in an ice bear fridge. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Okay, we can go back there. What is a giant ice bear shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with Has the this thing just been plugged in the situation. whole time? Lucky us. Indeed. Refrigerated meat is much better for coroner's work. All right, chat, power me up. Give me, give me, give me the boost. Give me the Motorex boost I need. Your arms Thank reach God. out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. Everything is silent, all around. Crawl up his nostrils. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers in his nose. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. Put your fingers in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Say abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. Touch it with your fingers, Jedi. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth. Right into his brainstem. Jesus Christ. Brainstem? Yes. That's what this part is called. Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wake. 
Thank you, conceptualization. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. I feel a solid object right under can the skull. You, can you get to it? Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. No way, right? You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. A bullet. Mm. The lieutenant puts a small bag marked evidence under it. Drop it in. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non calibre Rifle. Some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Keep it, Lieutenant, as a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. Lieutenant drops the, drops the bag in your hand. It feels We light. need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds about right. Opinion, fatal injury. Agreed. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Treatment, officer, is an attempt to manipulate the body after death to hide the real cause with a false cause. In this case... This injury here. The ligament mark, the fractured hyoid bone, it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. <laughs> I think so. I did not just come up with this. I have had my doubts since we found no signs of struggle on his wrist. No claw marks on his neck. Why? Why didn't he fight for his life? There have been other signs too. Small thing. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes. We should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer 
The real motivation? What really happened here? What happens we next? put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. Nice. This was really good work, detective. Thank you, Kim. Shoot, Looney Rooney. He's got nothing to Come say. back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manner. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Drag him to the kinema. So is this like D D as a detective game? Yeah, pretty much. It's a it's a detective R RPG. But uh, it, it it shows. I don't really know how the dice rolling works. I'm not quite sure I understand it. But uh, it shows a little bit of dice on screen whenever you pass. Whenever you try attempt to check. There go those beautiful enamel boots. You will never own the full set now. May they rest in processing. So oh, be well. it. In another lifetime. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands. I sort of like L.A. Noir, Way different to L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir wasn't, uh... Well... Uh, there weren't really choices in L.A. Noir, were there? Yes, there were? Okay. Maybe like Ellie Noir then. A little bit. I think this game is much more focused on it being an RPG. Because you get a blank slate and you don't get a... Whatever his fucking name was. That you play as yes. in Ellie Noir. Yes. You pick over what's left of your frontal cortex, but no compelling explanation. God damn it. Okay. Oh, let's, uh, let's read the, the note, note from the fridge. is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. Kuno? You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? Really? You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on a filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Wonder who wrote that note. Someone who owns a radio computer? My guess is as good as yours. You forgot about the cursed place. We'll go back. I was, the priority was getting the dead body in the fridge. Remind me again. What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. It's like the production schedule you found. Only this one's an off-site. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could I be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Put the note away. And then we got the bullet. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled, Head of cauliflower. What do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, 
the better. Feel the bullet through the bag. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. Inspect the bullet closer. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? It's a jacketed bullet close to five millimeters in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle. Not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This'll have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. You can't God, remember what it. happened last week. What makes you think you're going to remember arcane firearm models? This bullet has nothing more to say for now. Dude, I feel like we're failing so many checks. It's so sad. Well, I thought... I don't... I didn't... I was wondering if it would just uh, say it's, it's bedtime now at 2100, but it hasn't yet, so... Is there... You should ask chat for help, or is there a limit? No, I could have. I just, I don't know. It feels kind of cheesy to ask for help every time. I could. Can we go back here? We actually can go back here. I didn't know that. It's just a drying, the smell of chemical pine trees. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue. It's for mystery. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The winch. Outside. In the backyard. Remember? No. Your fingers do. There was a winch outside on the roof, like that small like that of a small elevator. Mm. Well, if there was a winch, I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. The door and the main investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Touch the the cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted maybe. The door does not budge. An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Can I help you? I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing. Great. I love those. There's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the oh, kitchen. Oh yes, that door. Sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what, what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frick warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes? All right, I guess it's not fucking bedtime yet. I don't know if Kim will stop me and say we gotta we we need to sleep. Have we sung karaoke yet? No, not yet. I didn't sing karaoke in my first playthrough. I'm certainly gonna try this time around. 
I don't know how to. I assume we gotta find the, the, the cassette for a song. Alright, let's head back into the commercial area, I guess. Oh, that doesn't work. Uh-oh. How, how, we have to go all the way around? Holy shit. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. <laughs> Nobody voted? Oh, you guys suck. Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore. And best set mailbox also. I feel you, mail collection box. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully, even so do you. You shudder, then you swallow. I don't know if it went through. Uh, I don't think it did. I saw I saw zero percent on everything. Maybe I just was blind. The cover stand is very muscular man surrounded by flames. The book is titled "Man from." Him doll in the wildfire. The book is about pate. This book you don't really understand what's about, nor does it seem important. A book about Bordero culture. It promotes freedom and roaming upstream. A book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. For the drunk guy down there. This point operator viewer has been banged up, inoperable. About north. To Cape Side Apartments, Martinez Pier. The ad reads Broken Window, Tibbs Has Windows. This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubble gum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Look inside. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and grays appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. The church looks old and weather-worn, there are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building, you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach, and a small tent set up on the ice. Vandalism. Probably some kids. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. You had a, if you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. Where do I get a bag? I don't remember. This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 sentences and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's a tourist attraction doing here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. I suspect that something was Evart Claire, the union leader. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Can't we do something about it? We should have done something about the union ten years ago. 
That ship has sailed, officer. Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk. The ring of metal. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab gray shape. Like a ghost. Turn the knob to focus your vision. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. There are ruins of some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. There are ruins of some kind Oh no, I said that already. Alright. Hello, bird. A lonely cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to my approach. The belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. What have we here? A mural? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Oh, shit. Chat, give me the strength. Give me, uh, conceptualization. What is that? I think that's, uh, intellect. I don't think I don't think it's possible. Yeah, there's no way. You have yeah, no clue. So. It's just a wall. Okay. Oh shit, we're behind Kuno S. You little bitch. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Apparently, she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. All right, see you later, Kuno S. Oop, Kim's got something. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for the damages yet. You should take care of that, then. I don't have any money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. All right. So at 2200, he uh, calls it. Oh, hang on. This guy's got a bag. I see it laying at his fucking feet. Excellent. Bag acquired. Let's get to work. Splatter bolt holes line the walls. Go! I could, I should, okay, I, te I can pick these up, but it's not, oh wow, okay, I gotta keep my eyes open. Tire tracks leading onto the roof, the slush and rain has almost washed them off. Onto the roof? Bearded chirps and clicks of swallows fills the air. Onto the roof? An ancient fountain doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Some great tectonic forces crack the pavement like an eggshell. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass time. Lieutenant K Kitsuragi is gone. Uh, 
There's a fucking can on the ground, go get it! Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. The damage will clearly could have been caused by an earthquake. Ooh, hang on, I see a motherfucking bottle down there! Let me see if there's a bunch of shit here too. Is there really only one? Yes. No, nah, there's only one. Are the strikers still here? They aren't. A foreign car kept in good condition. I feel like we're getting sidetracked a little looking for bottles. Okay, there's a bottle right there. Grab that shit. Clean up the town one bottle at a time. We're like cleaning up the town so I can get cash to pay off the ridiculous amount of uh, money I owe. This is not going to come nearly close enough to being how much I need. I'm pretty sure I need like 70 bucks. The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk. Into yeah, we got a dollar thirty. The money appears with a. How much you need? Like 70. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we owe 70 for the room. Can Jack give you a loan? I don't think they can. Can I help you? So about that money yes. I owe. Have you got it? How much money do I owe again? A lot. For the drinks and broken window, 70 real. I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I'll pay you back tomorrow. I'm an honest As cop. As a police officer, you must understand that I cannot take you at your word without evidence. Evidence being money. You can't stay here without money. Hold on, I still have my key, you know. Good luck trying to use it. Draconian measures. <sighs> All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay, I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. There's yes. gotta be a way. Have you got it? We come to Does an that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed. You Can, how about how about like a down payment? It's cold out. I'll freeze to death because I'm losing the stupid money game. game. Everything is just a game to you, isn't it? I'll find a way in. I'll break the door down. Oh, wonderful. Try to do that. I'll have to call you an ambulance. <sighs> Not until. Okay. I really didn't want to. Oh, God damn Lieutenant, it. we're done here. <sighs> God damn it. Okay. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. Their silver edges sparkle in the dark. 
I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are those things? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. Honestly, that sounds like an amazing physics demonstration. What do you mean he confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official son and hi. So you took his spinners? Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. Isn't that corruption? I don't know. Is it? I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. Did you want to put these spinners on your machine? No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Yeah, outrageously cool. He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. <sighs> Fuck. Ginger said I get one sorry the entire game. Chat, can I say sorry to Kim? I can't do it. I can't do it unless you let me chat. Look, I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me. As I said, they are useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. But thank you. Is this something about a pawn shop? Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. Thanks, I appreciate your help. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. <sighs> I wonder if there's a way to avoid having to pawn the spinners. There probably is. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you don't have to sleep in your room at night. I'm pretty sure you can actually be a hobo cop. Fingerless gloves, let's go. Water lock out of order until Wednesday. Okay, I don't know what day of the week it is. Kind of machine and antique cash register. A bust of a woman, the plaque simply says D Day. In the dark, a film projector is whirring away. Most military wear with a few eccentric fashions thrown in. Wow, a very large red t shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other car. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding toward you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. Sniff the t-shirt. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. Photon emissions? You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? What's the deal with the man on this t-shirt? It's the man from Hyundai. Walking away from his burning village. Yes. I guess, I'm guessing I'm supposed to know who this man from Hyundai is, but I lost my memory recently and need help remembering basic facts about reality. 
Remind me, who's the man from Hyamdal again? The man from Hyamdal is the hero of a series of popular books based on a fictional version of Kotla. Mostly what is nowadays Arda NFD. In fact, most people don't think that man from Hyamdal ever really existed. But they are wrong. Hyamdal isn't a real place. Neither is the man a real man, of course. But both the man and Hyamdal are an ontological necessity. But hey, it's not worth getting into an argument about. Okay. A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. Let your gaze run over the, the streetlights. Light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. Where did you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. How much for the streetlight? 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. Are you out of your mind? There's one just like that on every corner. The light has undergone three transformations, and every transformation, large or small, has a price tag. What do you mean transformations? Well, there are the cost of removal and rewiring. The most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. Okay, that checks out. I'm a little strapped. Don't have quite enough for the, the street light. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here, then use it to win her back. What? Yes, buy something nice. A figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Inspect the knights on horseback. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks, the kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Franco-Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. A long, long time ago. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Are these royalist soldiers? Which ones? Ah, those. Yes, they are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but children like the bright colors indiscriminately. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. It is impossible to win against the cohorts of capital. Ask my friend Garte, whose bitch it made me. Okay. I don't like either set too much, to be honest. Dig up a truly f figurine, uh, a truly cool figurine in the box under the table. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say found. What's this? Oh, that's the headless phone rider. Who? The Headless Fawn Rider. 
It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Fifty cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. Fine. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. The boombox is on the shelf. Look well, love, and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says, Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Gold and orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Shopkeeper, the stereo aid approved machine here. Is the Harman Welshie W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel to reel format. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. supposed to talk to him so it's not often that i see officers from the rcm in my pawn shop what can i do for you his courtesy is not insincere but he prefers being alone with his projector just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop sorry i feel like oh nope can't apologize now that the rcm is here tell me have you had any trouble i lately? haven't had any problems myself Though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Mm, fair. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection. I may have something it to add to it. It keeps me entertained. Is Roy high? And if yes, then what is he on? Okay. God damn it. He definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it. And many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. Looking at his wares, talking to him, that might give you more clues. Something yes. I'd like to sell. We'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 real. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Thank you. Here's the 70 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh, I have this commemorative pin before I sell it. I have some questions. Son Batiste Summer Dinghy Rates is 31. What a pleasant time that was. So, what do you want to know? Price? I can give you three. No, I don't want to thing. sell that. So, do you want to sell anything? Yeah. Anything else this. you're thinking of selling? Sell the cassette? Yeah, sell the cassette. Dark worker shift card? No, I'm not selling that. Green ape pen? No way. Lieutenant's handkerchief? No way. Remember pen? Nah. Uh, postcard? Yeah. Shot put ball? Yeah. Filament? No. Postcard? Mm. Everything else I'm good. I don't have anything else to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. By the way, do you, um... 
happen to have any guns, like ones carried by cops? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Oh no! This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh god. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol Citizens Militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia. And now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? I don't like it either. What if she intends to commit a crime and blame it on the citizens' militia? You're right that she could cast aspersions on the force. We have to find out. India, where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer. But I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something Of else. course. Alright. I think we're good. See that chat? My insane gorilla strength, I just accidentally flung the clip out of my hands. Alright. Let's go pay off Garte. Also, we can give Lena her pin back. I don't really want to sell it. I kind of felt bad. Hello again, sweetie. I hope you were able to pawn that old trinket. I decided not to pawn it. You should have it back. Oh, thank you, dear. I confess, I am glad to see it again. Even the lieutenant seems happy with this turn of events. Now, what else, sweetie? We gotta get going. Bye, Lena. Garte, you motherfucking mob boss. Can I help you? Yes. Have you got it? I have well. your money. Slam the bills down on the counter. Great. Perfect. I hope you enjoy your freezing cold room with the window you broke yourself. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9pm tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, please pay for each night in advance. 20 real per night. If you don't have the money, it's over for you. Got it? You've got nowhere else to stay. Time stops advancing after two in the morning. If you haven't paid for your room by then, it's game over. Don't leave finding money to the last minute, however. It's harder to make cash after nightfall when the shops are closed and the streets empty. I'll take a room here too. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Fuck you, Garte. Fucking prick. There's a reason I'm putting points into Encyclopedia. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts with a man's handwriting. That's because Sylvie quit, right? I never noticed that the detective's head moves. What? 
Does it always do that? No way. I've never noticed that. Yes? Alright, chat. Power me up. I want to know. This would be, uh... Intellect again, I think. Okay. Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to Slight, Precinct 57. Yeah, that makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. Kim. Oh, this is gonna suck. What if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke. I've considered it. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, through Policies Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. I love Kim. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. You had some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? We should talk about the investigation. Oh, it's my other shoe! Foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I don't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How'd you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. The music's a little loud. Give me a second. I don't want to turn it down too much because the music is very good. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit below it all. Right then, the new debrief. Yes. It's been a long and even full day. How did you get enough money to pay for rent? We sold Kim's hubcaps. Or snot hubcaps, uh, spinners. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. Then you shot the body down, which was quite the shot. Damn straight, I'm a sharpshooting cop. On this occasion, I must agree. At any rate, your shot enabled us to perform a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. Did the spinners have any other use? I don't know. On my only other time I played this game, I also, I also sold the spinners. Moreover, you found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged, he was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet, so we can get ballistics, make of the gun. All this is invaluable. Now I know 
No, no, no wallowing self pity. No big deal. The rest is up to the boys in processing. Maybe they will surprise us by doing their job for once, but I wouldn't count on it. There's still work to be done at the crime scene, however. We mustn't forget that. Now for the interviews. The inter interview, the initial interviews, yes. Well, we talked to some people. Not always the right people, I'm afraid. We weren't able to find the union leader, Evrard Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We didn't talk to the Wild Pines rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? <laughs> Yeah, it's part of the Jamrock Shuffle. All right, but... And forgive me, this has been bothering me since this morning. How have you managed to run around all day wearing only one shoe? <laughs> I couldn't find my other shoe and I refuse to wear shoes that aren't as cool as the shoe I'm wearing. <laughs> it's part of my penance, I'm punishing myself. Well, there seems to be a shoe that is a match to the one you're wearing further down the balcony. Perhaps you can collect it when we're done talking. He's right. There it is, green and shiny under the glowing whirling window. The sky. I, compl I completely dark, forgot I was wearing only sparkle. one shoe until like ten minutes ago. Imagine how much faster you could run wearing a cool patent leather shoe on each foot. So what are our powers exactly? The RCM. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to one thousand real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. A thousand? Why not more? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Ravachol. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, how can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. I see. And if someone re resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records which is why it's paramount to keep them. So if I kill someone while on duty... You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government founded the RCM. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. The Moral Intern, what is it? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. If I didn't know, how would you describe them? They are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Who is Dolores Day? A historic figure, the author of the modern age. 
You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. What is their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. I have an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My fucking Lord. I forgot. I forgot you can just be like a fucking unapologetically racist in this game. They've done an awful job here. Have you seen this place? This isn't humanism. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Maybe we should make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. Say nothing, just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock and the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And the Jamrock and GRIH? We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. I hope our investigation will improve the situation here, at least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. He is very tired, but the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Hang on, let me grab my show. Nice. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Like two baby crocodiles. Wait, these do not look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. There's a lack of magnesium in yes. me? Yes. And it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. So I need to mag it up? You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to ascend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. 
Oh, my slots are full. Let's head back in. Oop, hang on, we got another thought. The smell of sea, the smell of the sea makes you dizzy. stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break you with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. No stream announcement today? Fuck. God damn it. God damn it. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Wait, what am I doing? Something you've done before. Assess the size of the it impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The shoe you found on the balcony fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough, if thrown with force. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. Maybe I, was, maybe I had a good reason for it. Maybe I was trying to hit someone. And maybe, just maybe, you succeeded. We'll never know. Or maybe you were trying to smash your own reflection in the window pane. Hmm. Is there anything else? The window do stands window? broken. In nope. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. The bathtub back. slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Address, close your eyes and support. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. You feel nice and lonely, and so, so tired. Take the beer cans The out. cans continue to bubble. Oh no, shit, I left them in. God damn it. Aimlessly splashing up against the sides of the tub. Imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Figured the tub a little. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. Get out. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. Man, this bed does not look very good. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Nice stream alert, streamer man. Yeah, it's a big oopsie on my part. And then sleep doesn't come. And then sleep doesn't come. But I want to sleep. Obviously, 
You're in bed with your eyes closed, but it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. It smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. A bit tense in the muscles. Relax. What day is it in game? Or it's the second where we we just fell asleep on the eyelids, first day. You see a dizzy in array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Roll over to the other side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Oh, so you restarted? No. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Well, this is the same. This is the same game as yesterday. Slow gamer, I guess. Who killed him? Who? Something to do with. What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. No more thoughts. Fall asleep. Your breathing now. steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images. Images start forming. Seen many new things? Not that I know. Like, I, I I said this yesterday. I don't know what I missed my first playthrough and what is new. Like, I got the ledger this time around from the dumpster. I don't know if that's new or not. Thoughts on the voiceover from the narrator compared to before? I don't know. I kind of, sometimes I like it. Sometimes the delivery is different from how I. Uh -oh. Sometimes the delivery is different from how I uh, read it my first time playing, and I don't like it as much. Overall, I think I uh, like it a decent amount, though. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? If I wasn't streaming, I probably would turn it off, though. I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? You said who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? Tell me what this is. I'm not answering before you tell me who you are. You know who I am. I'm the bad day. The one where you ask her. And then later in the streets, wandering. It's the worst day of all time, Harry dear. And it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. Is the narrator different? No, this this, this is not the narrator. This is uh, this is one of the one of the different voices. Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me, do you remember the love of your life? That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go, let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I can get it all back. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The pale and the isolas on the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning, furious truth. 8,000 years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people and you failed every single one of them. You really 
fucked up. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve... Trying to solve the case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. God, there's another type. Oh, yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes, too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. Good going, buddy. Is that how it's going to be now when I close my eyes? Yes. Wait till you see the one with the chick in it. It's gonna be a good one. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What check? You don't know. You don't know. Some broad that messed you up. It'll come to you. It always does. What the hell is going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. No, that's not it. Really, I feel super good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. No, I can take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. That's a lie. I can do this without the speed. Half the town won't be dead. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. I expected emotion voices to be more wildly different. Yeah, I didn't expect them all to be one voice. But that that would be what? 6, 12, 24 different voices. Even the delivery is very similar from what I hear. Yeah, that's true. If the delivery were different, maybe. That'd be better. Did you look at any of the Vermintide 2 stuff yet, Vaughn? No, I haven't. Good morning, Kim. Morning. I've got some good news. I took care of the body. The thought of him decomposing in my MC wouldn't let me sleep. Good, thanks. I'm just glad he's gone. We have other matters to attend to. Oh well. We'll get the armored boots in another lifetime. Stop talking about it, goddammit! The Union Master finally turned up. And they look rowdy. We need to talk to them. What do you mean, rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here, men who drink beer for breakfast, there's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, 
who are responsible for sage policing. I think it's them. Are these the men Garte told us about yesterday? I completely forgot that. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. There are so many of them, maybe we should call in reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives it might has twitch not integration? I thought Vermintide war. already had Twitch so let's integration. Keep a cool head, okay? Why do we need to talk to them? Everything points to the Duck Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them. And it won't be easy. Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them. Continue with our business. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Hey, Garte. Can I help you? Nope. Hey, Lena. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. What's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. Why do you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. Did you pawn the knick-knack of hers yet? No, I gave it back. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Okay, I'll buy it. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. So your husband is some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto-zoologist, to be ah, more precise. Ah, so, so not a real scientist? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. Ooh, she doesn't like you, Kim. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. Oh, One she's specializing crazy. in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Oh, we could convince her to tell us about some cool cryptids and we get a bonus because we have the fucking eight pen. Let's do it, Chad. Help me out. Give me that. Give me the psych up. I 
Thank you, chat. You're very based. Sometimes yes. the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. Can you tell me about one, just one interesting cryptid? I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. One cryptid, like you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. Okay, Kim. Just one little cryptid. Promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Ooh. Tough choice there. Uh, what is the most dangerous cryptid? The gnome of Jeroma. The gnome of Jeroma? That doesn't sound too oh, bad. it is. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What does this cryptid lo look like? It was, reportedly, a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks, confirming the existence of this very little species? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. Alas, always, alas, and then it was gone. Isn't that overly convenient? No, it was a perfectly good explanation. Stop being so skeptical. Sure, a perfectly good explanation. It dissolved in its own venom. Go on, then. Ask about more gnomes or whatever. <laughs> Is that a cryptid on the pen you gave me? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. <sighs> but Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? The lieutenant pauses, thoughtfully. Something in him breaks. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> That's a great line to hear, fucking voice acted. Well... The cryptid on your pen. Kim is really the doesn't kind like you? That's not true. Half war story, half undiscovered species in the gayness homo. What'd you call me? Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow, with its saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different gayness. Which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own, just like your partners. Is she being is she racist thing Kim? Did you do the dance first time around? No. I did a uh, a certain something that kept me from being able to dance when I went to the uh, the, the place. I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't watched. Or people like who haven't played and this is their first time seeing anything about the game. I just don't, I don't want to talk about my first playthrough. Cringe, yeah. I won't make that mistake this time. I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is stupid. Well, I don't want to be mean to Lena. Ha, <laughs> that's why I always have to take the lead, right, Kim? I'm beginning to wonder if I should. Please don't misunderstand me, either of you. I didn't mean to imply that Saolites are inferior to us. In, in many ways, you are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. Wow, I do not remember Lena being this... Weird. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. 
But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today. What's the biggest that cryptid? That would be the giant of Kokonur. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Wait, what do you mean strange uh, lights? Mirage or a psychogenous luminance. She does not elaborate on the nature of this luminance further, and just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. The is it towering dangerous? luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others unimaginable oh yeah. no animal can be that large it's a mirage that's what makes it so peculiar a species surviving at the very limits of scientific law the giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support there are limits you see to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Great. This is great shit. You need more. Gravity <laughs> anomaly? Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. What's the tiniest cryptid? Cryobacter catlensis. Cryobacter catlensis? Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history. I just want to point out that my view count, this is this is the, the peak for this stream. It's peaked while Lena is telling us about fucking cryptids. Mishinu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. She injected herself with it? Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. It's actually a little hard to see, but do go on. You mean there's an immortal biologist wandering the world? Geologist, I'm sorry. Wandering the world? Yes, and she's quite mad, too. After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible so that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now, all alone except for the cryobacter catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Are there any invisible cryptids? What an interesting question. And the answer is yes, there are. Of course. All fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. Shush, Kim, she's going to tell me about the invisible cryptid. It's the Col de Mama Dakwa. Its name means thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. The cold de mama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. Cold de mama d'aqua can also be translated as a whisper light and low. What evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of areopagite ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Mm -hmm. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding 
mating and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Coldamama Dakwa, after the Paracanassian name for the Voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Google's a bit true. No, that wasn't what I was Googling. Wow. Mm hmm. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds. Even though they couldn't see them, they could distinguish among individual birds and even began to name some of them. Sequester, Time, Joss Can. Those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. They whisper light and low. Yes, that's another translation. They are both quite lovely, aren't they? Although the low part is a little ironic, the Col de Mama Dakwa makes, or rather is, such a high-pitched sound that other animals, including humans, can't hear it. It could be everywhere all of the time, and we wouldn't know. Fine, I'll bite. How can an animal be a sound? Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. I really want to be done talking about cryptids, but for the sake of exhausting all the dialogue options, could it be here, right now? It could be. As I said, okay, thank it God could it wasn't be a tangent. everywhere. And we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. Why is the Mama Dakwa so afraid of us? That is a sad story. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project, and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. I've been gone for like five minutes and we're still talking to Elena. Don't you want to hear about more cryptids, Rox? They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mama Dakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? Psst. They cancel each other out. They cancel each other out. Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency... I've had enough! <laughs> they wiped out most of the population. Great regret washes over her. After that, the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kaltamama Dakwa population anywhere. Of course. A common thread in these. Disappearance and unfalsifiability. I like the story, though, ma'am. I'm glad you did, dear. What about what? Alright, we're done, man. I just can't get enough of these cryptids. I'm glad you like them. But I'm not really one to tell you about all of them. You should ask my husband if you get the chance. He's the real expert. What's this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Science. Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? Who's this Gary person? Do you trust him? Oh, sweetie. It's nothing like that. It's just my husband's boyfriend. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Are they in 
a rough neighborhood. There's a nameless old fishing village nearby, but we've never had any trouble there before. There is a lot of crime around here, isn't there? I can't say it's the best part of town, but I wouldn't worry too much about a pair of grown men traveling together. Do it. Find her husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Some fringe science is exactly what's needed right now. Spice up that vanilla murder investigation. <laughs> this sounds like a police business. I'll help you find your husband. Are you sure we have time to go chasing after bug hunters just now? I did suggest we play it cool, but... Just a little side thing. We'll do it down the line. <sighs> if you say so. Oh, thank you, officers. Truly, I'll, I'll be right here if you come across any sign of morale. Tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. <laughs> no, I want to hear about the insect. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... Ah yes, Phasmatodia, a diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs, leaves, that sort of thing. Ghost. Oh yeah. Shit. Here comes the interesting. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the phasmid with us, officers. I knew it. We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. It's not made up, officer. I can assure you. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. So, is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Does it have cool powers? Yes. It can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. So it's a giant Centuries stick bug? even. What makes you think the phasmid is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They, they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have. Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms. Ah, of course their they description do. description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly. And they didn't even know what they were looking at. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. You seem really excited about this cryptid. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the Insul Indian phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. Okay, what's so special about this stick bug then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. The water lock on the canal is broken, so your husband is probably just stuck on the other side of the coast. Holy shit, are we still talking about cryptids? Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Weren't around the canal, some weird new cryptid destroyed it. Oh, now you're just having fun at an old woman's expense. In any case, Thank you for looking into this. It takes a weight off my shoulders. Thank you both. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here when or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. That's all for now, ma'am. Alright, I'm gonna run downstairs and get a refill my drink and then we'll keep going. I'll be back.
to double check to make sure there's any. Uh, make sure we got all the cryptid dialogue. <sighs> I'm kidding. Let's get the fuck out of here. Maybe we go talk to Everett first. Was that? Could it be? The Koldamama Dakwa? No, it's probably just your imagination ringing in your ear is it is there a ringing there seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring ultrasonic lena said it was very high-pitched right it's like something tickles your ear lena also said that it couldn't be heard by any other animal including humans what you're hearing must just be a regular bird honestly your ear isn't hearing a whole lot. The distant hum of the industrial harbor, the traffic. But, admittedly, there is a high-pitched noise somewhere there too. But then, isn't there always? Wait, Kim, do you hear a high-pitched noise? No, I don't hear the Koldomama Dakwa, and neither do you. I don't know, how did he know that's what I was thinking of? Of course he doesn't. He's deaf. There it is again. You are about to rediscover a long lost species. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. Keep still. It might perch on your shoulder. Oh no. The sound. It's moving away. Somewhere over there. Go after it. No. Too late. It's gone. There is no ringing anymore. Just the sound of the streets. No, come back, please. Keep your ears peeled, then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you're sure to hear it again. Seven hours, oh my god. Um, I guess we'll actually let's complete. Let's let's finish exploring the uh, doomed commercial zone. We never end up doing that. A good one. Yes. Hello. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Is she such a working class woman? Why isn't she working? Shouldn't a working class woman be working? Not all the time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman needs something to read. Good, good. It is. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'll leave. It takes willpower to even read the author's name, Jean Cos from Igua Iguania? That's made up. I had really high shivers my first playthrough. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm neglecting physique this time around. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Storekeep, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Raubritta is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Do I have friends? Are you actually friends? Or just colleagues thrown together by circumstance? I don't feel as though I have any kids. Friends are technically like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. 
It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. No, I'm all right. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Kiamdal. Wow, more, oh shit. Wow, more Kiamdal. Mountains of it. Heroic quantities of Kiamdal. Roy's puny shirt is nothing compared to the real deal. Look through the display Rows books. and rows of Kiamdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyamdal. Return to Hyamdal. And the solipsistic. Man from Hyamdal and the Hyamdal Man. Good God, how many are Maybe there? Maybe a hundred. Man oh from my Hyamdal fucking God. The sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyamdal and the false God. <laughs> Man from Hyamdal and the scorched earth. Man from Hyamdal, the Hyamdal colonies. Man from Hyamdal and the swamp beast. Man from Hyamdal and the snow crabs. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Hyamdal in hell. Man from Hyamdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyamdal under the lake. Man from Hyamdal, Hyamdal burning. There's even the oh, trial of chat. death. A pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yondalaman, and so much more. Power me up. <sighs> Nothing of interest. Only silence and the cosmic background pain radiation. <laughs> God damn it, I'm back. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Storekeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Look through the crime books. fiction is a disgrace, an asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? No, Shelves no. Shelves filled to the brim with crime no Tome, it's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Storekeep, anything of note on the shelf? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Who or what is an innocent? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. So you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. 
It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Mm. No. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Revachol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint-Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And west of the river? Kudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No. This is somewhere to be. This is all you have. But it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. <laughs> this bookstore is not the last strictly shelf, I about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. No, no, no more, no more fucking... No more, no more. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Let's go hunt ghosts. Destiny Brain can't take the reading. It's being read to me. I just can't take all the fucking science fiction. It's driving me insane. Alright. Anyway, back to exploring this cursed uh, building. Looks like they're made of a 24 hour window repair shop. Oh yeah, we didn't put the uh, thing in the machine. Let's look at this shit first. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. Bad attitude to have in a game with a world completely different world. You're very fair. You're very fair. And the, the, the world building in this game is interesting. I just don't want to be in the bookstore anymore. <laughs> The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7 UKV 123.9 Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. If this was in a game like Divinity, would you listen to it all? I would listen to it all in this game. I just want to break it up. I just, I just want to get out of the fucking bookstore. I just got word vomited up a bunch of cryptid facts by Lena. I want to, I want to explore the Doom con uh, commercial zone again. We'll go back and read all about the supernatural books. Fuck, we'll even buy them all if you guys really want me to. Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. This must be an elaborate piece of art. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, 
titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's pl playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing. Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My God, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Mm-hmm. The cost of air width alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Let's stick it in. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? This is the Ream Civic radio computer, model RC5120. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Turn it on? The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. What is Kim's nationality? He's Seolite. He's from, uh, or his parents are from Seol, wherever the fuck that is. Hey, Q, do you want to play Vermintide update after stream? Uh, maybe. I might save it for a, 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 a stream at a later date, rather than doing it off stream. I might get on and see what it's about, though. Good morning, Sarkis Accident en rue de Saint-Gueslain. This is East Inslindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What are you, a machine, or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old, and my name is Yvonne. Now, please repeat. Is this the production schedule? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner, tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian Station. Okay, but where are you? How do you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East she just Insulindian said that. Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well... 
I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. And what's that? This interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? She didn't answer my question. Okay. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Alright, thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password? Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. Was it my birthday? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Still no. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password. Received. I will... Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else? Thank you. Tiles on the cube are still small. About print. Nothing happens. Yeah, okay. All right, back down we go. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's just a failed business. The only question is what the hell were they making? Yes. That is the question. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. What kind of loser would play those? Radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. And this is a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. <laughs> what do you think happened to this company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Has anyone done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. How are they planning to do it? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... They were insane if they thought they could do this. Yes, especially in here. Okay, let's keep moving. Alright, down we go. Yeah, I say I'd say that most of the rolls are over too fast for uh, gambling to be worthwhile for this game. Hello again, Fridge Bear. The 
Bear's eyes are still glowing. <laughs> the wall collapsed inaccessible now. Ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Oh shit. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. Where are it's we? It's too dark oh. to see in. I keep talking over the narrator, sorry. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Yeah. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. An old Belmagrave rifle, a revolutionary era. Prize for its reliability more than its accuracy. The rest are probably Belma Graves too, just too damaged to be sure. This Belma Grave looks okay. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Could this be the murder weapon we're looking? It's the same type or, of weapon. Or could the yes, murder weapon we're looking for be similar? Order. An interesting coincidence that we should find something so similar. But I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Can we inspect it? No. Three dollars for this rifle? Are you insane? The bullet is still safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. A rifle, revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma Grave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian Theater of the Anti-Centennial Revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you. The dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Is anyone still making these rifles? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this game from came. What are you thinking? Bullet? What? Are you, is he talking to the bullet like me? I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? The shot probably came from a Belma Grave rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachon, really. That's probably a good thing. I have thing. to hand it to the monarchs. It's quite admirable that they took the advice of criminologists last century and banned the use of breech loaders in peacetime. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement to front loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. 
worthwhile getting shot. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. But back to the investigation. Hmm, interesting. This social commentary in my video game. Have, have Wellum Jamrock bangers started crossing over into Martinez? Let's find out. Next step, finding the gun itself. True. Bull has nothing more to say. Hmm. I think we're going to hold on to this point for now. Actually, no, we probably shouldn't. Get the politics out of my video game. If you took the politics out of Disco Elysium, then there wouldn't be any game. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Turn the ice cream Turning the crank the ice cream feels crank. oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. Thank you, Inland Empire. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else. Some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Equip the pry bar by going to- Shut up! I know! Christ. I should have turned off tutorial agent. Gosh. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Unplug the Something black close cable. to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Because it's black, the color of the immeasurable cosmos. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Unplug the giant red cable. An electric too. sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand. Wait, we actually ice do need a super pry bar? What the fuck? Electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Fuck it. The ice nah, sucks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. What is this? You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it, but this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advanced tool to get it open. Advanced? Where do we get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool, my- Okay, thank you, Inland Empire. Ooh, insane mesh tank top. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. This should take us back out into the roundabout, right? Yeah, we're back out here. Back in. A 
thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside the it's furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? I am hallucinating. Wait, really? Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. It feels safe to know that the lieutenant's got your back, now and always. This sounded real, not imagined. Oh, God damn it! Chat, psych me up, please. Help me out here. Muster all your strength and yell. <coughs> dehydrated, hungover throat can produce little more than a dry croak. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. Those voices I heard? No, that's stupid. You have no clothes to boost it? I don't think so. Yeah, no physical instrument. Let's climb back up. We can't try knock on the door. I was just worried that would uh, do damage to me when I didn't have healing. As before, this is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably came from here. Hello, I yelled, but it didn't work. Again, your voice becomes a raspy croak mid-sentence. It's silent in the abandoned office building. A sudden bout of self-pity comes over you. Desire, <laughs> may we suggest something? Think of the yelling into the furnace as a grand performance. Use your chest voice, not your head voice. Sing from the diaphragm. Okay, is that gonna give me another attempt at it? Let's head back down. Round two, baby. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Another pathetic yelp sounds off into the vast darkness of the oh. chimney. You're a little embarrassed you produced it. <sighs> a lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing <laughs> through you. Who? All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Hadramut <laughs> Karzai, smear your cheeks black with Three coal. dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? <laughs> I am the reincarnation of an ancient Ilmari Ilmaran warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. Mm. 
Okay. Thank you. So, where were we? God damn it. I guess I'll come back with a level up. No way, there's money down here. Oh shit, there's, there's a whole area down here. No, not really. Kim's bitch now? No. I just respect him. Also, it's better than being Kuno's bitch. Put the flashlight away. Christ. Um, let's head back up here and see if we can make the jump. Can we look at the footsteps again? There are several footprints in the mud. Oh, right, Left visual calculus. Workers. Holy shit. And Forgot about that. Can you get on good terms with Kuno in this without you knowing? I don't know. There is a quest to go confront his dad and steal drugs for Kuno, so maybe. We gotta get all the way up there again. Alright. Take my shoes off because apparently they damaged my savior fare. Our pulling cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. All right, psych me up, chat. <laughs> One more time. Nice. Thank God. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Close your eyes, let your senses take in the world around Ankles you. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. Continue your voyage through the salty air. As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable, must be the adrenaline. Hell yeah. My climbing might not have been as disco as your jump, but can we still get an aces high? With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. I'll be taking that. This is the exact moment I hopped into the stream the first time you played this. Nice. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent pills. Snow is quietly covering the numerous wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Did I do this? Well. Yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. I must have been on an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. Yes, this looks pretty advanced, all right. For now, let's just move on. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud, you need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. No, I'm all right. <laughs> oh, 
all around you great machines in quasense? I don't know what that word is. Radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. Giant aspirin on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. Standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Oh? This is a Dewey typewriter, same model. The model name is on the back. Every worker member of the board is written on top of the flyers. And, and at the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's inside. Okay. The drawer the up. opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Rest of the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Force yourself to go through the folders. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Okay, so that's how the dice works. That makes sense. It's simple. I never, I, I didn't realize my first time that you could hover over the check to see how it worked or what, what the outcome was. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do list with a, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably the head of the Debardeurs Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Take, take another look at the note. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes. Special whirling borscht. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Let's keep looking. Ooh, more magnesium to mag it up. Ooh. Need office shades. Don't mind if I do. Looking, looking good, Harry. Oh, my pants affected my savior affair too. Damn, I should have taken them off. The door's locked. Can I move to the side without a pass card? Don't I have a pass card? Or I guess I have a worker's ID. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. 
it's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. God damn right it. Now, God damn it. It's just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Did you add me on Snapchat this morning, by the way? Or is that just some sus upon uh, imposter? Yeah, I did. Undoubtedly, no. I might try this again sure. later. Why not? I'll be back, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Pause it, that's control of me. Wasting precious daylight. White pine's trees are printed onto the screen covering, looks like a forest under snow. Ah oh yes, I do love fucking around with incredibly heavy machinery. You see in faded industrial lettering. Shit! Kvaslin. 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 White Ford in Ardan. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. The speaker tower is sound. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. Size thermos smells like burnt coffee. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Muindi. Container, container, used to be Wild Pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. <laughs> I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? What is it with you people in I scabs? Mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. Just some of the other oh, guys God. don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Mm. 
The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pine's livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Miss Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. What's underneath these red covers? Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. This looks like a massive redecorating operation, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Thanks, Leo. You've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douay Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. No. Oh. Doctor, well. my matra said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Are they doing a great job around here, Leo? Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Where is everyone? The harbor's empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. What kind of trouble did this Titus and his friends get into? Well, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. Okay, Leo, let's hear about this fight you got into. No, no, no. Okay, too rowdy, Leo? What kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Oh, words, God damn it. words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now, he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. What's in that container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh, yes, yes. 
I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Hold on. Who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Something is off about this borscht. I'm going to look into oh, it. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes. He didn't actually understand what you meant. And now he's just nodding along. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? This he's guy is just nice fellow, spewing forth information. And his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find oh, this man. Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. Okay, I'm bye off. Bye now. Alright, let's jump back to that container, because I, I didn't fuck with the control panel. I want to see if I can. I get the feeling having interfacing gloves on is probably the move. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Elume on Etendre off. The crane stands tall, proud, erect, and still. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course. For this purpose, it was built. For this purpose, it has acted. And now it will rest. Suspiciously meta? I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Alright, can we crack this thing open? Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. <sighs> Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe, I can't tell. I think we should investigate further. Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? Maybe there's contraband in there. There may very well be, but we are not here to look for that. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to interview the Union boss. No reply. The knot produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. You attempt to turn the handle. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Guess we can't go in, son of a bitch. Yes? You're lucky, Kim. Let's go talk to the man himself.
coffee in these giant thermoses is still lukewarm. A stair made of pallets leading up. A taxi fish that tells time. That's cool. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. Oh, he's huge. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Let's get straight to business. There's been a murder. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite, of his, opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. Fine. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Since when have we known Harry's last name? Just now. We knew his initials were HDB, though. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Rebishal Citizens Militia today? Oh god, the chair hurt me. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable <laughs> chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. <laughs> he points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Wait, you know Gart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At Keep. least, don't thank him for it. Keep it, I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, <laughs> he Union knows about the gun as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. <laughs> Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I would appreciate any help you could provide. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. The chair is killing you. <laughs> oh no. Kim, um, Kim. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Oh no, chat, help me. I don't want to panic in front of Kim and Everhart. <laughs> Dear God.
Who the fuck <sighs> I think you are? Thank God. Ronnie the rookie. You ain't worried about no lost gun or unpaid bill or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. You're probably more corrupt than him. Wait, that's it? That's my point of pride here? <laughs> fuck yes. You're part of the old guard, the ancient guard, the most corrupt, unholy cops in the land. Chill out like the black dragon you are. Sink deep into the folding chair, smile, and cross your hands behind your back. The fat man does the same, sinking deeper into his chair than one would think is physically possible. He seems to be enjoying your little display. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. Where are we going with this? Listen, Everett, pal. We both know what makes the wheels of the world turn. That we do, Harry. Let them say what they will about you and me. We're both born fighters. Nice bit with the chair, by the way. <laughs> a good way to keep your guests on edge. Why, thank you. It's always nice when a fellow professional appreciates your work. That's it. Now kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. Thank you for your hospitality. Feel free to visit me down at the station anytime. You strike me as a reasonable man, Harry. I like that in a law man. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? What can Everard Clare do for you? I think we'd like to ask you a few questions. Don't you think so, Detective? The lieutenant looks quite fed up with the situation. Somehow you managed to get yourself out of this one. Now quick, keep the momentum up. Ask questions. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Kvaslin crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a... Uh, say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. I've opened a few doors in my life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. The stars aligned into a cosmic frown here. He has your fate decided. Bide your time, however, and let the stars continue their course. And that frown shall turn into a smile. Only if you play along. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door no, is it? No one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Damn it, fine, I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. 
Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. God. Hold on, could he really be holding my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Wait, the gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored yes. that in? Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. He's so condescending. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry, relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martin Ains. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. I have to pick one. Does it mean if I do things for you, I will get my gun Damn back? It, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. You called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everett. I call you Harry. And that's what the Hang of Corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. The memory's fine. I'm testing so you. good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. I need strength again. I can't be beaten by this fat bastard. As you look oh, at thank the folder, God. covers it with his hand and pets it. Losing, losing it checks in this game just feels so awful. Because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. It's not real RCM, it's just not all of those brown folders. Oh, so he is bull bullshitting. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. You never tell us what to vote for? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I guess I should specify. And everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? I will. In the future, I will specify which one I need. About you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. I'm looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. 
Ever, I'm gonna leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great, wouldn't want to get stuck here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. it up there for today we'll continue the disco elysium escapades tomorrow uh maybe maybe i'll play something else for tomorrow so far i'm enjoying my second playthrough of disco elysium though so i'll probably keep doing it on stream if it's not even if it's not consecutively uh thank you for watching i hope you guys enjoyed i will see you guys tomorrow have a fantastic rest of the night. I love you guys. Bye-bye.